and Marcus, uh, 14th Amendment due process rights. I make a reservation for those rights, especially, but all rights at this time. The record to reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person, in custody. He is appearing uh, today in street clothes. He has a dress shirt and a tie on. He's also wearing a mask. And I don't consent to being called that name for the record. As this paperwork, I accept for value and return for value as it does not state the correct name. It states the name of my client, the straw man. I am not this name in all capital letters. I do not identify by that name, nor do I know that individual. Your objection is noted it's baseless in law and fact, and <coughs> that is simply a caption on a pleading uh, that on is the not my name. final jury instructions. That is not my name for the record. All right, the record should reflect, Mr. Brooks, I'm talking. The record my should name. reflect that at 3.23 p.m. yesterday, all of the verdict forms were printed off and provided to Mr. Brooks. I also uh, provided him with an excerpt from the bench book on closing arguments. Um, I left a copy on the state's table as well and a second copy on the defense table today as well so that uh, I thought that would be helpful information as we are um, about that time in the proceeding for the parties to uh, give their closing arguments. Of course, prior to that, the court will be reading through the final jury instructions. Um, the parties were also given uh, the updated version following the jury instruction conference yesterday as well. Uh, the total number of pages for that is 107. The court will be reading from the first 73 pages this morning. I do anticipate having to take uh, one or two breaks before I complete all of that. I'm, my plan is to do that uh, and then take the lunch break. Uh, and then when we come back from lunch to have the parties provide their, oops, they're not opening, their closing arguments. And then following the closing arguments, uh, the court has the final uh, jury instructions which go through uh, the instruction, uh, instructions 460, 484, and all of the verdicts, uh, and then the instruction to the uh, jury um, 515 about their verdicts needing to be unanimous, and then um, selection of a presiding juror. The You're asking for your rights to be acknowledged and it's all about this sovereign bullshit. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that type of shit. The law is the law is the law, and you fail to abide by the law, and that's just how it is. Your name is Gerald Edward Brooks, Jr. No matter how many times you say that's not your name and you don't consent to being called that name, you need to give it up, bitch boy. The very last page, 107, actually is not read until the close of the case and only following um, receipt of verdicts or some other type of disposition that would result in the conclusion of the case. It's the instruction after the verdict is received. So uh, page 107 is not something that will be read uh, today. As indicated yesterday, I will be selecting the alternates by random selection. We'll use the tumbler um, and uh, select three numbers out of that, but that will be done after all of the instructions are read and the parties have an opportunity to give their closing arguments. Uh, Your Honor, I accept for value and return for value any uh, documents that you just alluded to. I have not seen them. Mr. Brooks, if you haven't seen them, that is by your choice. They were provided to you. I know on multiple occasions yesterday you threw items into the garbage can. Um, the court retrieved the final jury instructions. I personally didn't, I had someone do it, had them placed on the table this morning and any other items you threw in the garbage. So is that is that the paperwork that I had to stay here for over an hour for? 
Sir, I'm not going to discuss any further what we did during the jury instruction conference. The jury is going to be brought jury out instruction a little conference. bit later. <laughs> it, there was a conference. We talking about the proceedings from yesterday or after you had uh, told us we recessed Mr. for Brooks. The, I'm referring to after you called recess for the night yesterday. That's what I'm referring to. Those I, was, I was put in the holding cell for over an hour because they said it was some paperwork that needed to that be. That is correct, sir. You were kept there in order for my clerk, who had to finalize 76 verdicts, two each, one not guilty, one guilty, and provide those to the parties. Um, is that and so the, that's why you were kept there, so those could be handed to you. My understanding is they were. I would need a bailiff to confirm for me whether he took those back to his cell or if they were put on his desk because he left them um, in the holding cell. Left them in what holding cell? In here? I have to look through his paperwork to see if they're on here. What holding cell are you referring to, Your Honor? Behind the door. I, I didn't leave anything in that holding cell. I was just trying to figure out why I was in there so long. Are those the verdicts? Yeah. All right, he has those. Then. Thank you. Is this the paperwork that was just put on my, it was the paperwork on uh, the desk when I came in that was on top of my folders? You know what paperwork she's talking about, you jackass. She's talking about the jury instructions yesterday when he threw it in the trash, like she said. And now she's talking about verdict forms that her clerk put together for each of the parties. You, jackass, you, and the district attorneys. And you know damn well there was no conference without you being there, so chill the hell out, bitch boy. Mr. Brooks, I know that they were, you were given the opportunity to take them to your cell because that is what I was advised. Whether you did that or not, I don't know. That's but they not are also on your desk now. I accept for value in return for value any documents. We did discuss all of the jury instructions and the verdicts yesterday. So what was discussed when I was in the cell for over there an hour? There was no discussion, sir. The court was in recess. Madam Clerk was simply finalizing the paperwork <coughs> based upon the discussion that was held on the record in open court yesterday. I was told that I had to stay there uh, per you. Yes, so that we could provide them to you and you would have an opportunity to take them back to yourself. But can they, you wish can they to have been them. delivered to the jail? All right. Um, I don't believe there's any other preliminary issues there we are. need to address other than an advisement I will have for Mr. Brooks. But let me turn to the parties and ask if there's anything preliminary to uh, this phase of the trial, which is the jury instructions, the verdicts, um, and closing arguments from the state. Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Anything else from you, sir? Yes, there is. Um, yesterday, I uh, stressed to the court numerous times about me not understanding the proceedings um, and essentially how uh, decisions are being made on my behalf without my understanding or giving consent. The court made various rulings yesterday. I made findings and ultimately made some determinations. I stand behind the record that was made. I'm not going to explain it further. So a lot of those decisions were made when I was not present in the courtroom. I was in the other courtroom, correct? That's true, sir. Is that correct? Um, the record will indicate when those were made and where you were. I can't, um, I can't see the record, though. How, how am I supposed to know what the record will reflect? <laughs> Sir, the decisions were made yesterday. I'm not revisiting them today. They need to be revisited, and they, it also needs to be talked about uh, subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven for the record. I'm still trying to understand, Your Honor, how um, you made a, le a, a, a judicial determination on my behalf, which I did not give consent to, to, as you say, I forfeited my right to testify, which I never did. I never said I wanted to. I never said I didn't want to. 
but that decision was made for me. Also, the decision, the decision for the defense to rest its case was made for me, which I did not consent to, nor did I say I was ready to rest, or nor did I say I did was re ready to rest. Hey, piece of shit, Brooks. You could have brought those back to your cell like he said. You chose not to. You chose to throw them in the trash. That's on your ass, not hers. You didn't uh, say you wanted to rest. You didn't say you didn't want to rest. Uh, your attitude and your actions did, bitch boy. Jesus. Seedings, you're full of shit. You are so full of shit, you son of a bitch. You didn't give permission for that. You didn't give permission for this. All this bullshit that you've spewed during the whole trial. The people in Waukesha didn't give you permission to mow them down, killing six of them and injuring over 60 others, you stupid mother effer. I'm trying to understand how all these decisions are being made with, without my consent, without me waiving any rights. I'm, I'm not understanding how, because none of my answers were unresponsive. I just didn't answer the way that Your Honor wanted me to answer. But I stressed yesterday, if I don't understand something, how am I supposed to answer a question that I don't under, understand fundamentally? It's not, it's not me saying yes or no. And it's not me saying, okay, I want to waive this or that right. And I'm not, I'm not trying to make an argument with you in any way. I'm just seeking to understand how these decisions are made. If I'm letting the court know and I'm putting the court on notice, hey, I don't understand this or I don't understand that. <coughs> Any other things? Otherwise, I'm prepared to address each one of those. Yeah. Um, there was a, a, mention, a mention of um, if there is a conviction in this matter, there is a mention of um, sentencing, which... I'm assuming there be a uh, some type of um, um, people may want to speak. I know I'm, if there is a conviction on my half, people would definitely want to uh, address address the court. Um, there'll be a lot of affairs that need to be put in order. Obviously, on my side, um, if it pleases the court. If there is a conviction in this matter, I would like the uh, the sentencing to to not be so quick. I'm, I'm asking if it pleases the court for the sentencing to be held off into a later time, not a day or two or a week, just so that affairs can be put in order properly and so that the people that want to come in and, and speak will have the opportunity to address the court. I think if that's a that fair pleases, request, sir. If that pleases. I think that's uh, a fair request. I thought about that and some more overnight that it, in the event there is a conviction that um, I would like to give the parties an opportunity to do that. I have no idea how many people would want to speak. My inclination would be again, and I'm, this is not set in stone. If there is a conviction um, on any of these counts, I may ask the parties to just come back in on Monday, October 31st with uh, kind of a proposed plan of how many people do you think will speak on your behalf, how long do you think it will take, um, so that I can look at my calendar and then uh, set aside the appropriate amount of time. I certainly don't want to rush anything, and I think that's a fair request that you're making. Thank you. All right. You waived your rights because you were acting like an asshole, Brooks. You saying yes or no. She told you and asked you time after time after time. You answered the way you felt like you wanted to answer at the time. Then you come to court the next day and say, well, I didn't understand, and I didn't say yes, and I didn't say no. Well, your attitude said it, bitch boy. Get over it. There is a conviction in this matter. 
Everybody knew there was going to be a conviction except you, you stupid ass. You gave yourself too much credit. You were not a good so-called lawyer. You're a perfect defendant because you love breaking the law. That's the only thing you're good at is being a defendant. And then the judge stating, yeah, if there is a conviction in this case, if. Come on. Just tell him. One time, man. Just tell him. Sue Opper said it. The evidence is stacking up and he doesn't like it. Oh, well, bitch boy. You knew there was going to be a conviction. You were just in denial. And also, nobody ever showed up for you. Even your grandma and your mother wouldn't even come to the courthouse. What does that tell you? Um, so with all of that then, sir, subject matter <coughs> jurisdiction, I decline to address that further. I stand by the written decision um, that I've made previously. Um, as far as the rulings made yesterday regarding uh, your ability or inability to present further testimony and witnesses and to testify yourself, the court did make various rulings and findings that you had forfeited your right to do so by conduct. I'm not going to further explain the law or these prior rulings to you. I stand behind them and I believe I made a very, very clear record. Um, so to the extent that you are asking me to reconsider any of that, uh, that's how I would interpret your statements here today. I decline to do so. So, Your Honor, would that be, um, that's still not, I have no understanding to um, why I wasn't given the opportunity to place certain things into evidence. I, I have virtually nothing nothing zero evidence that I was able to place into evidence nothing I disagree with that sir you called I think nine witnesses on your behalf um, on various issues including uh, the honking of the horn the window tinting you cross-examined many of the state's witnesses about police barricades in the presence of police so you did I'm, present evidence I'm speaking to the terms of everything that um, Your Honor asked me to do. You told me to uh, put everything that um, I needed to present to the courts in writing. You you made that ruling. You told me that's what I needed to do. I did that. Um, I, Mr. Brooks, you may have interpreted that. I did not require you to do that as far as evidence in the case. I very expressly told you there are rules of procedure and rules of evidence that govern exhibits, testimony, witnesses, etc. What I told you is that any requests that you have related to the case, if it's a motion, be put in writing. I specifically referenced the statute 80201 regarding how a motion is made and what it should contain, meaning it has a very express uh, request for relief and states the law and the facts upon which the request is being made. Um, again, I'm not going to revisit the prior rulings. Um, I stand behind them. And to the extent that the record does not have, uh, meaning the record before the jury and the evidence does not have certain pieces of information, evidence or testimony that you uh, wanted to present, um, you forfeited that opportunity <coughs> yesterday based upon your conduct. How did I forfeit the opportunity? Like Judge Doro said, you waive, you waived your rights to do so by your conduct you dumbass that's how you were acting yesterday and because of your conduct you don't get to testify on your behalf which hey you want to know what it wasn't going to help you anyway bitch boy and it saved you some words and it saved you some air you know so just look at it that way it would have made it much worse because you're a dumbass Again, I'm not going to revisit that, sir. What I, I will forfeit, tell you is this. How did I forfeit this the jury opportunity is here. to be able to place into evidence Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to be. debate this further. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to debate. I'm trying to understand. to respect the fact that I've made rulings. Your Honor, that's, that's you it's made not a judicial determination. It's not my job to explain them you made to it, you. I'm not asking you to explain anything. You're misinterpreting what I'm trying to ask you and trying to tell you. You're misinterpreting it. With all due respect, Your Honor. 
I, when you tell me this is what you need to do, I'm going to take it by what you're telling me that I need to do. If I needed to make anything request-wise or anything that I needed to present to the court, it has to be in writing. You told me to do that. I did it. You also brought up when I asked numerous times before, before when would I have a chance to present things into evidence, you told me we were not at the evidentiary phase of the trial yet. So I took that as saying, okay, well, at some point I will have the opportunity to place things in the evidence that need to be put in evidence for the record. So I, I'm not understanding how a decision can be made for me to actually forfeit being able to put things into the record that need to be placed into the record. All these things are, are, are things that, quite frankly, allow me to put on a defense. Uh, things that need to be known, things that should be in the record as far as filings, as far as uh, 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 ICFs that I was told to by you to address certain ICFs either to you or to the clerk of courts, which I did and received copies for all of them except until last week. It was a few of them that I didn't receive copies for that I'm still wondering why I haven't received those copies when I received the copies of all the ones before that. But in, in, in terms of that, I did what Your Honor asked me to do. And these are things that were part of my defense that needed to be placed into the record. So where my confusion comes in is not being able to place those things into the record. Things Mr. that, Brooks, things that clearly help my defense. I stand by my ruling. I'm not revisiting it to the extent that you claim lack of understanding or your lack of consent. It's been made abundantly clear on this record, your position on that. I'm not revisiting it. I'm further advising you that when this jury comes out, I expect that you will honor the decisions that were made, not agree, but you will honor them and not the court. You didn't have any evidence anyway. The only evidence you had was something you probably wrote down or something your mommy probably wrote down or your Grammy. But you didn't have no evidence. Nothing can make you look good because there's no way to make you look good. You're evil. You're vindictive. You're worthless. It matters, dude. Because of your conduct and you acting like an asshole... And you're not acting like an asshole. You're just a plain asshole. But because of the way you were so damn disrespectful and didn't want to answer her questions, you gave up the right to put stuff into evidence and you gave up the right to testify on your own behalf. You gave up the right for all of that. And she made the decision for the defense to rest because of your conduct, dumb ass. For these proceedings, as I instruct the jury. So how am I supposed to put these things in the record that need to be in the Mr. record? Mr. Brooks, I'm well aware of the effect my ruling had, and I'm not going to debate it with you further. I'm ju I just want to know how am I supposed to get these things on the record? How am I supposed to, because the filings that I gave... You actually filed and gave me the copies back. So are those in the record? Mr. Brooks, I'm, I'm no just, longer I'm going just seeking to talk to understand. about this. I'm just seeking to understand. Mr. Brooks, I cannot explain procedure or evidence the filings that or I the filed. rulings or I'm the asking law a question, to you. I'm merely asking a question. The filings that I presented to Your Honor. Any filings with the this court. court are in the court record. That does not mean they're evidence, sir. And I've told you That's that not previously. what I'm asking. I'm asking, are the filings part of the record? The filings that were filed in timestamp that were notarized that I presented to the court, all the filings, the appearance bonds, the, the statement of particulars, the, the notice of special appearance, the, the, uh, the, the court docket sheet, your oath of office, everything that I tried to present into the record, how am I not able to make them part of the record? So they were filed because you you presented them to the court during the course of this case. 
Anything that was not offered as an exhibit and received during the evidentiary phase is not evidence in this trial. That's what I attempted to do, and you told me that I couldn't. You told Mr. me- Mr. Brooks, I am bringing this jury Your Honor, out. Listen with all to respect, me. you told me that we were not at the evidence. When I said I have um, exhibits as well, I have stuff that I want to put into the record. I even asked, I said, Mr. Brooks, may I give an off a offer into evidence I'm these, going to stop you things. once again. I'm not going to have this discussion and debate. The evidentiary phase of this trial is closed. It should not be. All this was, was you trying to delay. That's all this was, you dumbass piece of shit, Brooks. This is all that was. She already told you the evidentiary phase is over, bitch boy. At the jury... I understand your lack of consent, your objections so when would I be is able noted to put, for the when record. When would I be able to put vital information into the record, which I haven't had the opportunity to that do? That opportunity has closed for you, sir. So so you're saying basically you're, prejudice, you're prejudicing my defense by me not being able to present things into evidence, offer into evidence filings in important paperwork and documents. Mr. Brooks, and you How forfeited not, your right to do that by your conduct yesterday, and I stand behind that decision. I asked, I'm going I asked to do before the yesterday, sir. Your Honor. I'm going I asked to do the this following. before yesterday. You have not honored my request to you that you cease debating me on prior rulings I'm not trying to debate. I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand why my due process is being violated. Mr. Brooks, the record speaks for itself. No, the record I'm does not. I am going to take it, it does a five-minute recess. When I come back out, the jury will also be coming out. I'm advising you, there will be no, there will be no multiple opportunities where I uh, give you to conform your conduct to the rules of decorum well, did, and courtesy. Well, then just hold me in contempt you, then, Your Honor. You, you don't have any vital information. You never have had any vital information. And like she said, that is close, dum-dum. Listen to her for once. The way you talk makes me feel more stupid every day because I have to hear this shit. She is not prejudicing, prejudicing your defense by not letting you put stuff into the record, in, into evidence. You don't have no evidence. All you have is nothing. You have nothing. You are nothing. You'll never be anything. You are Hold hereby me in contempt because I didn't even. I'm trying and to seek to understand. If you start talking about subject matter jurisdiction or any of these other, it issues needs to be addressed. Or Your Honor. in any way, we're not talking about subject matter jurisdiction. We're talking about why my why my due process I has will been violated. Excuse the jury, and you will be removed Your to Honor. the other courtroom. We're talking about the Fourteenth Amendment. Section right. I'm one. taking a five minute break. We are Your Honor, I don't agree I to a estoppel. I don't agree to a estoppel. Your Honor, as a as yet to be proven for the record. And upon your refusal, that would be looked at as dishonor. I'm not addressing it. The jury's coming out. So this is that a, a, a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer any questions as a public servant, Your Honor? Therefore, being that's dishonor. Are you going to honor your oath of office? Stand. I'm not addressing it. Further. Are you going to honor your oath of office? All right. So I'll take that as a tacit agreement that you're not going to honor your All oath right, of I'm office. All right, I'm going to have to excuse the jury. Mr. Brooks, I warned you that if you made any interruptions when they came out, you would be removed to the courtroom. That's what I'm doing right now. You're forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom unless you can promise me right now you'll respect prior rulings of this court and not interrupt this next phase of the trial, which is the court reading the jury instructions without interruption from you. Can have, you do that? Have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, I very expressly warned you. Have I acted in dishonor? You have disobeyed a direct order from this court. Have I acted in dishonor? 
You have disrupted these proceedings. I have not disrupted these proceedings. Sir, can you pledge to me that when this jury comes back out, that you will remain silent and not reference things like subject matter jurisdiction, the court's oath of office, tacit agreements, or anything? Can you pledge that you will respect these proceedings and this jury by not interrupting? Have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? I will ask you one more time. Can you pledge to be quiet, sir? Why should I why should I have to make a pledge, Your Honor? Have I acted in dishonor? Because under Illinois versus Allen, I believe you've already forfeited your right to and reclaim that as soon as you are willing to conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in these proceedings, which at this point in the proceedings, sir, all I am doing is reading through the final jury instructions. I do not want that process interrupted by statements by you that are frankly misstatements of the law. If they're misstatements of the law, Your Honor, how come they haven't been proven for the record? And I'm asking, have All I right, acted in dishonor? He refuses to answer the questions. Have I, acted in dishonor, I have given Your him Honor? an ample opportunity to do so. He has forfeited his right to be present for the reading of the jury instructions, and he is to be removed to the neighboring courtroom. We will be in recess until that takes place. Your Honor, have, Thank I, you. have I acted in dishonor? One of the biggest things I hated during this trial was when he would say, well, hold me in contempt, then. Well, hold me in contempt, then. I hated that shit. Because, like she said, you pretty much gave up your right to be in that courtroom because you were acting like an ass. You're an asshole. The way you treated that courtroom, the judge, the prosecution, the jurors, the victims, survivors, and their families is beyond disrespectful. And you didn't deserve to be in that courtroom as much as you were in that courtroom, but the judge felt the need to keep giving you so many damn chances. Well, she put you in the other courtroom during this time, didn't she? If you guys like this, I, well, I hope you guys like this. This is, or was, trial day 14. Tomorrow is verdict day. One year anniversary to him being found guilty. I will be posting the last uh, video out of the 10 videos. So today is, like I said, trial day 14, video day 2. Tomorrow is video day one, trial, and it court day, well, the verdict day. So I will be posting that tomorrow. I'm also going to be posting the stuff about the eye drop killer. So it's just taking a little bit longer because my phone's a piece of shit. I'm really sorry, you guys. I will have... Um, subscriber shout outs next thank you very much please like subscribe and comment below thank you you guys for your patience and hopefully your understanding